Penguin Random House Audio presents Elizabeth, The Forgotten Years by John Guy Read for you by Alex Jennings Preface Elizabeth was born at Greenwich Palace shortly after three o'clock on the afternoon of Sunday the 7th of September, 1533. The granddaughter of Henry the Seventh, the Tudor dynasty's founder, and daughter of Henry the Eighth and Anne Boleyn, she was the last of her father's children to inherit the throne. After a run of chastening, sometimes terrifying experiences during her Catholic half-sister Mary Tudor's reign, she was proclaimed queen by the heralds on the early morning of Thursday the 17th of November, 1558. Anointed and crowned in Westminster Abbey at the age of 25, she ruled for 44 years, longer than any of her adult predecessors apart from Edward III, a considerable achievement in itself. With so many years to cover, Elizabeth's biographers have tended to flag once she passed the age of 50. Having established a pattern for the years of peace before the arrival of the Spanish Armada of 1588, they either skate over the years dominated by war or fall back on the convenient shortcut of William Camden's monumental Annales, he wrote in Latin, completed in 1617 and published in two unequal instalments between 1615 and 1627. The book, now better known as The History of Elizabeth, is a mini-archive in itself, but it is a treacherous guide. Despite Camden's claim to have written an unbiased history firmly rooted in the archives, a forensic comparison of his quotations with the original documents shows that he regularly doctored his sources to fit his theories. His account institutionalised a whole raft of hoary myths full of reverential nostalgia for the dead queen. To insulate her from criticism, he drew a veil over her vanity and her temper tantrums. Most conspicuously, he glided over topics that were still politically explosive when he was writing. Usually this meant anything connected to the question of the succession, and particularly to Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, whom, sensationally, Elizabeth had executed. Anxious not to offend the new King of England, Mary's watchfully indolent son, James I, whose reinterment of his mother in a spectacular marble tomb at Westminster Abbey was taking place even as the earliest draft of the Annales was approaching completion, Camden was also eager to protect the reputation of his former patron, Sir William Cecil, who had served Elizabeth faithfully, if in his own way, from the time she was barely sixteen. Since Sample complete. Ready to continue?